They say you've got to crank a marshal to, to get it to sound good, don't they? So I think the thrust of my review today is going to be whether or not we can get this to sound good at low volume. Let's turn the volumes down to null. Let's put all EQs on noon. Let's start. Oh, hello. <laughs> That's on two. It's just too bright. It's, you know, ugh. This is too loud for your bedroom. Hello, good to see you. Welcome to the Guitaristas. Something a little bit different today because I've got a new amp. <laughs> yeah, I've got a new amp. So I've moved down to the downstairs studio to demo this today because it's a bit loud, to be honest with you. And it's a little bit of a bigger room, this. So I thought we might be able to tame the beast. It's only 20 watts, but it's a Marshall, it's a Marshall Studio Vintage 20C for combo. 20 for 20 watts. And it's got a five watt setting as well. So you think, oh, that's fine, isn't it? You know, easy, easy deal with bedroom volumes, you know, sound good at bedroom volumes, wouldn't it? Well, today we're going to find out. They say you've got to crank a Marshall to, to get it to sound good, don't they? It's all well and good if you're in a band and you're, and you're gigging and, and, and the like. But, you know, most of us probably probably just at home in our bedrooms, you know, practicing our windmills in front of the mirror. So... I think the, the thrust of this review, given that th this range of amps by Marshall has been reviewed, well, by everybody, basically, and uh, they, it's covered, you know, the, the range of sounds you can get from this, you know, clean, cranked, high volume and stuff is, has been well covered by lots of YouTubers <laughs> who are far better at it than I am. So I think the thrust of my review today is going to be whether or not we can get this to sound good at low volume, you know, the sort of volume that doesn't hurt your ears. I've had a muck around already with this since I've had it. My ears are hurting, quite frankly. So today I'm going to I'm going to start from a position of, um, you know, it's too loud because I know it is. And then we're going to work back and we're going to I mean, I'll show you. I'll show you um, with, the, you know, obviously. I might have put earplugs in, but okay. Well, look, let's get cracking on with it. Um, Timestamps are in the description box, you know. So if, you, if you're fed up with me blathering already, skip ahead and just you can hear what it sounds like. I'm going to demo a couple of guitars, three guitars, I think, with it today. We'll start with a 59, I think, because that's probably the match made in heaven. And then we'll dig out the SG Special with some P90s and then probably a Telecaster later as well. Okay, so... Without further ado, let's get stuck in. Right, a bit of info to start with. The studio range, 20 watt versions of classic Marshall amps from yesteryear. Three in the range. The Studio Classic is based on the JCM800. The Studio Jubilee is based on the Silver Jubilee. And the Studio Vintage is based on the 1959 SLP. Price-wise, in the UK, the heads are still selling for around about 700, 800 pounds, depending what model you want. The combos around a thousand pounds. Best street price I could see on the combo was 899 English pounds. And I just had a look on the Sweetwater site. They're quite a lot more expensive in the US for some reason. Oh, I suppose because they're British make, aren't they? Oh, yeah, yeah. Made in Britain. Did I say that? They're all made in Britain um, in uh, Milton Keynes now. Imagine they import the parts, but it says constructed, designed, conceived, well, designed something or other and constructed in the UK. This one here is a limited edition version. So I'm on the Guitar Guitar website shopping for the ES339 just the other week. And I saw this and they're having a clear out of these, 699 English pounds. So 
I thought, that's a good deal. I should get one of them. I was thinking of getting another one anyway. Did I mention this? I had a Studio Vintage head before when they first came out, but I couldn't get it to work properly. I, I just, it was user error, but it was just too loud. I couldn't get it dialed in. I couldn't get a good sound out of it. So in the end, I traded it for something else. And uh, ever since then, I've regretted it. And I've been thinking, oh, I might get another one of those because I'm sure it, it's, you know, everyone says how good they are. Anyway, when I saw this, the combo version for 699, I thought, there's my excuse. So I bought it and here it is. It's a cool looking thing, isn't it? So yeah, 60th anniversary of Marshall. Um, this is the white Levant covering, apparently, with the target design. And they also do it in a red or a blue. And um, yeah, they're on special offer. So if, you, if you're in the UK and you fancy one, get in quick. Right, it's time to stop talking and switch it on. So here we are. We've got a, a top shot so you can see what I'm doing, hopefully. Um, mains and it's got standby and a high or low setting. High being 20 watt, low being 5 watt. Now I'm going to go straight to the 5 watt. You'll see why in a minute. Here we are. It's a little bit hissy, as you can probably hear. There's nothing on the rig that's causing that. I mean, there's nothing, there's no drive pedals in the chain or anything that normally calls that sort of noise. There's nothing, there's just a tuner and the looper. So that's something, I don't know. what. Well, maybe I just don't normally notice that because the amp's further back, whereas it's right next to me today. Anyway, I'm going to soldier on, but there's that. That's what it sounds like without the guitar plugged in. A little bit hissy still, isn't it? Let's look at these inputs while we're playing around with them. So there's two channels. There's the, the normal channel, which is number two, and the high treble channel, which is number one. And uh, they've both got two inputs. They've got a high impedance and a low impedance input. And I understand that the top one is the high impedance and the bottom one is the low impedance. Now let's start, so let's start with the high impedance on the high treble. I'm going to turn it down. Oh, actually, so sort of turn the volumes down straight away, you can hear. Yeah, that's why it was hissing, because the volumes were... Well, they're only halfway up on the 5 watts, so I think that gives you... <laughs> an idea of what to expect. Let's turn the volumes down to naught. Let's put all EQs on noon. <laughs> and we'll start, let's just start. What have I done? Oh, left the tuner off. <laughs> let's start. Oh, hello. <laughs> can you hear that? Well, you can hear that and you can see that as well, can't you? Jesus Christ. That's on two on the high treble. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um. Wow, that's bright. I'm not going to go any higher on the volume on that at the moment because it's too loud for me here already. But what I will do is now plug that in to the low impedance. a little bit rounder um, not a lot of use to anyone though really is it I mean you couldn't uh... no <laughs> no basically at this point I'm not going to start mucking around with the the EQs to, to try and bring that into line because we're not even close. Uh, let's just plug that into the high impedance of the normal channel. Now that's different, isn't it? That's um, the other. Other end 
the scale. Okay, and the low impedance on the normal channel. So the volume's still on two, let's turn that up to four. What I'm aiming for, by the way, is obviously the plexi sound, the, you know, that high gain, not, you know, not, not distortion, but that high, that plexi sound, <laughs> you know, the plexi sound, the plexi sound, that's what I'm aiming for, the meh. <laughs> You'll know when we get it. So, right, that's where, that's where the jumping of the channels comes in. Because what, what we've established is even in the, the low impedance on the, the high treble channel, you got, it's just too bright. It's, you know, ugh. and then on the, um, the low impedance of the normal channel, or even the, uh, you know, too far the other way. So that's where the jumping of the channels comes in. And um, you can do it either way, really. You can you can plug into the, the high impedance or the low impedance of either channel. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna plug into the low impedance of the high treble channel, and then we're gonna jump the channels like that and then you've got it all coming into play like this still too bright isn't it The problem, I mean, we're getting there, but the problem is, you know, like we're on the high treble, I'm, I'm, I'm almost off near that. It's too loud. So what we have to do, and now this is on the five watt setting, so this is too loud for your bedroom without using some form of attenuation okay so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to use some form of attenuation i'm going to show you two things today and then the whole attenuator subject i'm going to roll over and i think maybe next week or the week after i'm going to do a thing with several amps showing di some different attenuators that I've got here sitting behind me. I've got here, I've got the Ox and I've got a Torpedo Captor and I've got a, a Dr. Z brake light. I've got something else over the back there called a, what's that called? Hotbox 120. And um, the cheapest form of attenuation, which is a volume control. This is actually the JHS little black box, but you can you can use a volume pedal if you've got one as well. And this just goes into the effects loop, um, which reminds me, and I <laughs> I meant to mention this earlier. This amp, these amps, I don't think any of them have in the range have they don't have reverbs basically. They don't have reverbs, uh, which which adds an extra harshness to it. So. Uh, they do, however, have an effects loop, or this particular model does, has an effects loop. So, as you will see, or you've probably already seen, um, we have got, I've put a reverb pedal in to give it some... Oh, 
Oh, sounds better already. I will play something in a bit, by the way. You're not just going to be confined to some badly played cowboy chords. Um, but I'm trying to make a point at the moment that it's too fucking loud. Now, uh, I'm just going to quickly show those of you that don't know how to plug something into the effects loop of an amp. It's right hidden away on the back of this thing, so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna talk you through some B-roll that, that I'll do later. Um, you can see on the back panel here, it's got an effects loop, send and return. So all you do is you take a lead out of the send and you send it to the input of the effect that you wanna add. And then you take a lead out of the effect and you plug it back into the return. And then you've got an effect in the effect loop. So now we've got some reverb, which you can adjust in the same way that you do. So there you go, that's for um, those of you that didn't know. And what we're also gonna do is we're gonna add this volume control in the effects loop. As I say, you can use a volume pedal or something like this. So let me just put the guitar down and plug this in. Right, here we are, we're back again. Full volume again. Now. So you can turn it down. Off. Let's put a quick loop down. We're miles away still. Um, yeah, it's just it's just not there yet. And this volume control is as low as it can go. So we need to take it a step further, I think. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna plug an attenuator in. I'm gonna go straight to the ox for today. And then as I say, in a, in a couple of weeks time, we'll muck around with some others and we'll, we'll try some others out. For today, I'm gonna to go straight to the Ox because I know it works. It should do it, it's a lot more expensive than the amp, but well, let's find out. And let's find out if we can get this to sound good at, at that volume. I don't wanna go any louder than that. You know, it goes a lot louder than that. I don't wanna go any louder than that. Um, still too loud for your bedroom, really. So let's plug the Ox in. And what I'll do is I'll do some B-roll now as well, showing you how I do that, okay? So looking at the back of the aux here, you can see from amplifier and to speaker, it should be self-explanatory. You unplug the speaker from the back of the amp and you take a lead out of that amp socket into this, where it says from amplifier, and then you take a lead out where it says to speaker and you plug it into the speaker on the amp using a little adapter like this. Uh, you can see the aux here has also got lots of other features um, line outs, stereo pair of line outs here, which we're not going to talk about today because I won't be using them at all, and also USB. So all I'm doing with the Ox today is using it as a, a power soak, basically. Uh, the great thing about the Ox is it works at 4, 8 or 16 ohms. I've set it on 16 ohms because that's what the amp speaker is rated at. So now, <laughs> we now 
We've got the ox in the loop. These are doing nothing. These are doing nothing. All we're using is the speaker volume. So let's turn it back on to low. See where we are. With the speaker volume turned down via the aux. So that's on full volume as we where we were. Already something's happening, isn't it? Four is where I normally have it for the Princeton upstairs, so let's let's well let's just go down to three for a minute. I didn't realise I had the tone rolled back there as well. Still really bright, isn't it? been messing around for quite a while now and I'm not I'm not there it's too gainy now I want to I want less gain I want less gain hmm let's try Just noticed the reverb was rolled. I'd knocked the volume on the reverb and it was rolled right off. We're getting there.
we're getting there. That's just kind of what I was looking for. That kind of well, nice glassy sound. That's it, isn't it? Nearly. So, uh, <laughs> more by luck than judgment, to be honest with you. I did a lot of fiddling around there, as you saw. And I've ended up in the, plugged into the normal channel and jumping across, as you can see. Um, and it's still really bright. This level though, this volume, is not ear splitting. It's loud enough, it's loud enough. It would annoy, it wouldn't annoy your neighbors necessarily. Wake the baby up though. But it's, um, yeah, it's a, it's a usable volume at home. And it's got a nice plexi sound without any pedals at all. And that was the point. I'm sure I made that point earlier, but there's no pedal. To get that sound just from the amp. Uh, I think it was Shane in the blues, brilliant guitarist Shane. I'm sure you watch him, but I think he said, you know, I think he reviewed this amp and said no pedals needed. And that's the point, isn't it, of a Marshall that you get the sound, you plug straight in, and you get you get that sound. So this is where we are. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I was looking for. So what I'm gonna do now is, let's try an SG with P90s and see, see what Pete Townsend would have thought. expect it to be brighter with single coils and I suppose it is it's quite nice though in a nice way isn't it it's got a not too piercing is it something rattling back there. You can see why I like P90s. This this is a this is a 300 quid guitar. So I'm really enjoying this amp now, but I think it, I think, I think it needs a little extra, well, it needs a little extra volume, really. I mean, I'm not using any drive pedals and I've not got any plugged in 
so I'm not planning to use any. But I think it needs that extra volume just to give it that extra push over the cliff. Um, it's nice as it is. With the single coils, I mean, obviously when you change guitars, things are going to change with an amp, always. That's why really we're trying different mm -hmm. things. P90s are, uh, and are always nice because they, they do drive it quite hard, but not as hard as humbuckers. So you've got that, you know. But it is crunch, isn't it? As opposed to high gain sort of plexi sound. It's a fussy little bugger. I don't think it's, I'm gonna say, I, don't, I wouldn't recommend it for bedroom use, really. I think, um, I think it probably does a thing and that thing is high volume. So trying to tame it is possibly not a great idea. The attenuator or the ox, and I'm pretty sure that the others would do the same, tend to strangle it. You know, it just sounds, just starts to sound compressed rather than bright and chimey, which is the whole point of it, isn't it? You know, that. And as soon as you start going down a notch, it's strangled. But that without attenuation is loud. And on the 20 watt setting, you'd be surprised, maybe, the difference between 5 watts and 20 watts isn't huge, but I'll show you what it is. This is 5 watts. This is 20 watts. It's noticeable, but it, you know, it's not, you'd think it would be a huge gap, but it's not. Anyway, um, you know, this film took way longer than I expected it to, just to, just to try and get something that I think sounds okay. It's not necessarily exactly what I was aiming for, but I think it's possible. I would, you know, I, I would use that sound to demo guitars. It's a beautiful little amp. If you're a, if you're gigging, or it, I think it's really designed for a studio setting, as it's called, isn't it? Called as a, it's the studio series. But I think if you're gigging as well, and and you want, and you want high gain, and you know you're playing, you know. It, pubs really, you know, you can crank this a little bit in pubs and, you know, not upset too many people, I suspect. And bearing in mind, this has got just a, a 10 inch speaker in it, which um, if obviously if you plug it into a, 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 an extension speaker, a 12 inch, you know, or even a 4 by 12 that'll open up a whole world of possibilities as well. And, you know, the 20 watt is big enough for anything that you're likely to do. Seriously, even if you're doing, you know, the Royal Albert Hall, you know, these days you only need a 5 watt amp, to be honest with you. But you can have it on the 20 watt setting anyway, if that, if that makes you feel better. So, yeah, I hope that was interesting. Um, let me know and uh, if, if, if it, you know, if it plays well, I'll do some more stuff like this and muck it around um, and uh, we can learn some stuff together, hopefully. And um, yeah, and, and if it does play well, I'll come back and I'll do a little bit more on the various attenuators that I have here and how they work with different amps. I'd, I want to try, certainly want to try the Ox on some of my other amps that I haven't tried it on yet. I've got a Super Reverb, I've got a Twin Reverb, I've got loads of stuff on I, you know, AC30s and stuff. I want to find out what, what it does to them, basically, and uh, what they sound like with a little bit of... Um, taming. So that's it for now. Thank you for joining us. Come back next week and see what we're up to then. It may be the ES339 part two of that review. Uh, it may be some attenuator nonsense, some amp nonsense, or maybe something completely different. Come back, same time, same place, and find out.
See you then, I hope. Cheers. Ta-da.